right, guys. Um, uh, Ibrahim, again, uh, welcome back to the channel, by the way. Um, if this is your first time, welcome, welcome. Share with your friends and family. You know, um, I, I'm trying to be objective as best as possible here because, you know, we all have a goal as Democrats, right? And, um, you know, our goal is to uh, unseat the Republicans and have a Democrat back in power. I'm supporting Bernie Sanders and a lot of young people in America are supporting Bernie Sanders because um, the ideology and um, the ideas of Bernie Sanders is all geared towards young people in our future. And it's like, uh, like I said, it's, I always give this example, right? It's like, uh, you know, you're planting a tree that you might not even enjoy the shade, but um, future generations would enjoy it. And that's what Bernie Sanders is all about. You know, everything is talking about healthcare for all, you know, um, Medicare for all, you know, college, you know, tuition to, to you know, lessen the, the load on parents. If you are a, a, a mother or a father today in America, you, 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 your kid is getting ready to college. That's a burden in itself, you know, and um, Bernie Sanders is the guy who's going to fix that. He's, he's for, you know, minimum wage and, uh, you know, it's for the common man. It's for the working class people of America. Because I'm telling you guys, middle class of America is going to fade in no time because all these billionaires... You know, um, they're out there. No problem against all the billionaires, but that's what capitalism gives us, you know. So uh, Bernie is a democratic socialist. He believes that, you know, healthcare is a, is a universal, you know, um, uh, should be universally, you know, uh, available for everybody, every human being. You would agree with me, you know, like what we have going on right now with this, uh, you know, uh, coronavirus. Some people might be sick, but because they don't have health insurance, they're not going to go to the hospital, you know. So these are all the things we have to take into consideration. But I'm going to share a little clip with, um, you know, about Joe, uh, Joe Biden here, because Joe Biden is what, you know, established Democrats are all running behind. But I'm going to share this clip of Joe Biden, because the problem that I, we have is the fact that Joe Biden is declining, you know, you know, uh, cognitively. I'm not saying this in a mean way or anything, but he's old, you know, and um, he's degenerating from within. And uh, that is not the kind of person you want to put up against the Republicans right now. And of course, it comes with a lot of baggage, a lot of garbage. And I said garbage because, you know, of course, uh, the nepotism thing with his son in Burisma, Ukraine, you know, it's, it's just uh, the, the current president and Joe Biden, you know, I mean, they all clumped up together. So Joe is going to be decimated by the Republicans. And that is why we need Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders is clean. He's clean slate. I'm appealing to all Africans out there if you're watching this. When you vote this in November elections, you're going to vote, please, you know, or even the primaries right now, you know, we have Maryland coming up. Just vote for Bernie Sanders because he is for the common people. He's for the common man. Don't, you know, associate Joe Biden with Obama's legacy or nothing like that. He's, he's, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about, policies that he has pushed forward that has been hurting, you know, the working class in America. But let me share this uh, little clip for yourself to see what I'm talking about when I say degenerating from within cognitive you know, a uh, uh, failure, of, you know, uh, it's it's sad, it's sad. And we, we cannot allow this to happen because otherwise the Democrats are going to be washed up again this election. Listen for yourself. The member caucus, there you have it. You're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. You said you were. Make sure the television, they, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, and so he's up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by that. Go, you know the, you know the thing. So, so guys, you see what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, again, this is a cognitive decline right there. Alzheimer's and stuff like that. It's a real problem. You know, um, uh, Joe Biden has no message that is catered towards black people. I don't know why black folks, you know, will continue to vote against their own interest. The fact of the matter is this. You know, um, I know there's the video that I saw the other day with, um, you know, Joe Biden in Congress back in the 90s or something when, um, you know, he was, uh, you know, fought, fighting for the people of South Africa with appetite and all that stuff. It was a big Nelson Mandela fan. You know, I respect that. And But same as Bernie Sanders. You know, Bernie has the same background. You know, Bernie was arrested, really arrested because Joe Biden claimed he was arrested in South Africa, but he has denied that a couple of times. He was never arrested, um, you know, but he keeps saying the same thing. Again, cognitive decline there. But Bernie was arrested during the civil rights movement in America, fighting for black people, and he's always championing courses that have to do with black people. So I, I don't know why black folks would, you know, want to associate the Obama legacy with Joe Biden. You know, Joe Biden, everything about the credit card companies in America is the pioneer, you know, um, of the, uh, if you're paying a high interest rate today with credit cards, Joe Biden is the credit card guy in Congress. You know, so the, these guys, he voted for the war, all that stuff. And Bernie voted against the war. Bernie has been fighting for middle class America, you know, 
fighting for minimum wage, Medicare for all, all that stuff, guys. You know, um, listen. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Um, listen to what he said to this guy, you know, in the town hall. I mean, again, you would say, what is it that Trump, you know, hasn't said, you know, but listen to this, guys. You can't even see why your wife left you. And he can't. It, 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 how can you tell somebody in a town hall that that is why your wife left you? You know, uh, anyways, but but it, it's it's cut totally off the six foot left the chain. You fold up, he said, You walk out with that chain and you walk to the car and say, You may cut me, man, but I'm gonna wrap this chain around your head. If you agree, so 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 guys, you know, I can't you know, uh, emphasize this enough, but please go out there and vote for Bernie and the primaries coming, you know, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, uh, is definitely the man that's going to make a difference for the working class of America. If you're really concerned about where America is going, you know, with the sufferings of people, you have veterans out there, homeless people out there, you know, Joe Biden's not going to do anything about all of that. Joe Biden's going to come to power and he's going to be controlled, you know, by the established Democrats. They're just going to keep, you know, accumulating wealth and, you know, doing what they want to do for themselves. So let me let you guys listen to the rest of this clip, you know, and just because um, I pulled this up from the Hill. The Hill, you know, these guys are very smart and, you know, they, they have the time to dig up all this information. I'm just sharing with you. Stay with me. Go to Joe 30330 and help me in this fight. Thank you very much. 2016 was a transition year from neoliberalism of the 1980s. In our history, we've always capped the end of an era with one term president who was a complete failure. John Quincy Adams, James Buchanan, Herbert Hoover, Jimmy Carter, and if we're not careful, Joseph R. Biden. So that's what I'm looking at, Crystal, in particular, is that I think that people in the rush to consolidate in the Democratic yeah. establishment, to stop Sanders in order to try and beat Trump and, and end this, is they're overlooking over how much the Ameri uh, everyday Americans suffered, really, under the Obama administration. And, the, you know, look, it's not just them. The 30 years of policies that preceded him. But he and his Biden were put into the White House in order to put a stop to that. And all they did was accelerate it by throwing a few, you know, woke tokenisms to people and not really actually addressing the structural problems. And Biden, all of the people around him, this is, like I said, it's a, gr it's a gasp of trying to get back into power. Yeah. So that Larry Summers and all these other people can come and run the U.S. economy again. And there's a reason that Donald Trump is in office. There's a reason that he will continue. I think he will probably beat Joe Biden like a drum, as he likes to say, is because it's exactly like 2016 all over again. They haven't learned anything on NAFTA, on trade, on China, Social Security, as you say. He doesn't even have the moral authority in order to attack Trump from the left because he essentially agrees with him on many of these neoliberal right. policies. I mean... The fact that the last best hope of the dying Democratic establishment is that man mm -hmm. kind of says it all. Yeah. And why? I mean, to your point, why do you end up in this place? First of all, I think there's a failure of imagination on the Democrats' part to imagine that things could be worse than Donald Trump, right? But let me tell you. If you allow these trends to continue unabated, if you fail to respond to the deep angst and core rot of America by actually improving lives and creating meaning for people again in this country, you will find out how much worse things can be than Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders, okay? <laughs> you are going to find that out. But why can they put their hopes in an empty vessel like Joe Biden? It's because they didn't learn anything from 2016. What did they do? They never stopped to say, like, how, what did we do that would lead to a Donald Trump, right? What did, where did we go wrong? What is it about this system that we contributed to that would lead this working class base that used to be with us to switch sides and go with the party of the rich and this, like, clownish, buffoonish guy? What did we do? They never did that. Instead, it was Russia, or it was Comey, or it was Ukraine. sexism. Yeah. Now, Ukraine, like, all these things. And so there was a, an inability. And part of that is because doing that self-reflection would have implicated them. Yes. They it would have implicated their, their whole right. way of doing business, the whole power structure that's set up, the gig flow, the act. All of that would be implicated, and they can't 
afford to do that self-searching. It's also why they can't make a coherent case against Donald Trump that would actually land with the American people about his broken promises to the working class, about Social Security, which many of them have lined up to try to work with Republicans to cut. They can't do that because that would implicate them as well. And this is why, I mean, why I try here to try and fight for a better left, too, is because when you have a real debate, you know, if the left was was beating the Trump administration down on manufacturing unemployment, especially in the Midwestern states of, of Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, the Trump administration would care a whole lot more about that. Right. right? Because there's no actual policy arguments. It's all Russia. He's an uncouth man. Our children are watching. This is terrible. Norms, my God. I always think about that when they interviewed those black voters in Milwaukee who right. stayed home in 2016. Right. And they didn't care that Trump, they were like, yeah, I don't care. They had no regrets. It's, you know, Chris Arnotti, when he was on the show, he wrote his book, Dignity, which I recommend everybody buy. Yeah, and he talks right. about non-voters. And he talks about why do these non-voters, the largest group of voters in this country are non-voters. Why don't they vote? Because they don't believe the political system will ever work for them. Think about the deep level of cynicism to pervade your life in order to go about and have no faith whatsoever. And guys, mark my words. Mark my words. It's going to be worse if Bernie Sanders is not the uh, you know uh, Democrat nominee up for the presidency for this 2020 elections. Like the the turnout rate for the elections is going to be so low that you know people will not be able to fathom what it is because Bernie is the reason why people get excited you know to come out and vote. You know, I know people are talking about electability. You know, hey, who's going to beat Donald Trump? But Joe Biden is not the man to beat Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders is the man to beat Donald Trump. All right, guys, I'll leave it right here. Thank you for watching. See you again.